Hey guys, it's Danny. Now, I'm not one to mess with a good recipe. So, when I found this recipe by Ina Garten, I just fell in love with it and I knew I wanted to share it with you guys. So, for this quick bite, I'm showing you how to make this clean and delicious roasted butternut squash and apple soup. I've got my oven preheating to 425, and in this bowl here, I have eight cups of butternut squash that I've peeled, sliced in half, seeded, and then chopped into little bite-sized pieces. Now, if you guys want the step-by-step -step on how to work with the butternut squash, you could check out that video right over here. But also remember, if time is not on your side, you can buy pre-prepared butternut squash at the grocery store. And if you're doing it yourself, don't forget that you can save those seeds and roast them up the very same way you would roast up your pumpkin seeds. Now over here, I've got two apples that I cored, peeled, and then cut up into bite-sized chunks. And in this bowl, I've got two yellow onions that I chopped into nice big chunks as well. Then what I do is I divide the squash amongst two different rimmed baking sheets, basically just split it in half. And then on each baking sheet, I add half of the apples and half of the onions. Then I'm gonna take a tablespoon of olive oil and drizzle it over each tray of fruit and veggies. And by the way guys, butternut squash, technically a fruit because it has seeds in it. Even though most people, including myself, just categorize it as a vegetable. Then we'll give each tray a nice big fat pinch of salt and some black pepper. And then I'm just gonna use my hands, make sure everything has a nice light coating of the oil and the seasoning. Now remember guys, whenever you're roasting any kind of vegetable, the ingredients can be nice and close and cozy, but you don't want them to be piled on top of each other. Because once we start overcrowding the pan, our ingredients are gonna steam and we don't want steam. We want nice, rich, roasted, golden vegetables. So now that I've got both trays all ready to go, I'm gonna pop these into my oven for 30 minutes and what I'll do is flip them halfway through. Now, depending on your oven, the time can vary a little bit, but the end goal is that all of the fruits and the veggies are nice and tender and they have a nice light golden brown color. So our veggies are all nice and tender and I've let them cool down a bit so they're easy to work with. And just a little FYI, if you wanted to, you could prep everything up to this step, then store them cooked in the refrigerator. This way you've got the bulk of the work done. Come dinner time, all you have to do is whirl this up, heat it up, dinner is served. Okay, so now I'm ready to pull this all together. I'm gonna take all the fruits and veggies off of one tray and get them into my blender. Now you guys have asked me in the past about what type of blender I'm using. Right now I am using the TriBest DynaBlend Horsepower Plus blender. Now this is not a commercial blender, but it has more than one horsepower. So it's one of the more powerful home blenders, plus it's affordable. And what I really like about it is that it has this glass pitcher, not plastic, with the spout. So when you're making something like a smoothie or a soup, it's really easy to pour in and out. And then it comes with these pre-programmed time buttons, but I still get to adjust the speed. So it's really convenient, but I still got full control. Now, to my squash, I am adding two cups of a low sodium organic chicken broth. If you wanted to keep this vegan or vegetarian, you could do a vegetable broth, or you could really honestly even do some cold filtered water because the roasted vegetables really pulls out so much flavor, you won't even miss the broth. One more pinch of salt, pinch of black pepper, and then a half a teaspoon of curry powder. And this just gives it a really nice warm underlying flavor. Okay, my lid goes on. Then I'm gonna let that blend for 60 seconds. Now, another thing I like about this blender is that it comes with this lovely stainless steel scoop that measures out one tablespoon. So you could actually add ingredients to this while you were blending if you needed to. Or what I really like about it is that you could reach this into the blender if you were blending something really thick like homemade ice cream or a um, nut butter, and then you could put this in without worrying about hitting the blade to get everything going. Then when it's done, I'm just gonna pop the lid off. 
and you're gonna see that the soup has this really thick, rich, creamy, velvety texture without needing any cream or butter. Mm. It's so good. So I'm gonna pour this into my soup pot and then do this one more time with the other tray. Then from here, I either pop it in the fridge until dinner time, or if it's time to eat, I just put it right on the stove over a medium heat until it's just heated through. Okay, this looks awesome. I'm gonna give it a try. Mmm. First, it is so rich and luxurious. And then you have the balance of the apples and the squash with the warm curry coming up. You guys have got to give this one a try. This is what I like to call clean and delicious comfort food. Now, if you wanna print this recipe, make sure you head on over to cleananddelicious.com where you can print this and all my recipes. And if you guys are interested in the blender I was using today, this here is what the box looks like. And if you're interested, what I'll do is I will put some links down in the description box below so you can see where to buy it. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below, and I will see you next time with some more clean and deliciousness. Cheers. I knew that I wanted to share it with you guys. So for this from the top, seeded it from the top. And FYI, guys, just a little from the top. Ooh, that's good. A little spicy. A little heavy handed with the pepper. It doesn't bother me one bit, but the kids might not want it. Not a problem. More for mommy. Mm.